Hi everybody, great to be back live online. I'm here in London. I've been in London for some time and one of the reasons that I'm here is to follow through on a lot of actioning being taken on this very special charity-based project I've spoken so much about. Some of you might have seen and, and remembered that I posted a live video a little while ago now. I wasn't able to tell you what it was about, but of course since then I've launched and been able to explain what this amazing theatrical production is about. And so today I thought I would first of all share the origins of how this amazing production was birthed. And it all started last year, in July of last year in actual fact. Some of you, most of you know that I have been walking a journey, a path for 12, 13 years now since losing my 16 year old daughter to suicide back then. And there were times where it felt absolutely impossible to, to even go on. And uh, some part of my journey, I made a decision that however difficult it might be, I would make sure that I would find ways to get through. And uh, I wrote a book in 2009 that chronicled my first stages of being able to understand and get deeper meaning into such a deep loss. But I still wasn't ready for the very in-depth explanation of what it was all about back then. All I could do was write about the understanding of what happens when a person passes on. So over these years, I've come across Fine Home created a technique that helped me to get through uh, very authentically. And I've been able to help many people across the world to, to do the same and work through whatever it is that they're going through, through loss or whatever. So over these last few years, I've been aware that it was time to actually do something more than just just assist per people. I mean, it's not just assist. It's the most amazing thing and, and such an honor to be able to help people. But I knew that it was time for me to become really authentic and work through some really difficult barriers in being open and authentic about this loss and how I went through it. And that would be the only way that I would be able to genuinely help others and leave a legacy for one day when I leave this planet. And so I was looking for different ways that I thought it might be a book, another book, a more in-depth book, or even a film. And I just put it out there. And then in July last year, something very, very special happened. I was dancing in a ballet production, in actual fact, and it was being held in Kenya at the Kenya National Theatre. Now, I had last performed at that theatre when I was 16. So when I walked into the theatre there, there was this profound feeling of, wow, I'm back here and I was last here when I was 16. Some of you might remember or might not even know that I lost Jen when she was 16. And the number 16 and 1 plus 6 and 7 and also the other number 9 comes up a lot whenever I'm dealing with something profound, it starts appearing. And when that happens, I know that I am going to come across a uh, something that will show me the next step of what it is that I require to do. So I was aware whilst I was dancing this that 16, I was 16 and here's 16 again. And what's that about? And we did the final performance and a very special friend of mine, Kez Smith and I, she was in the performance with me. We were joining the cast upstairs in the bar afterwards and we decided to go onto the stage and through the auditorium and the stage crew was striking the set and pulling bits and pieces down and playing music as they were doing their work. 
And as Kez and I stepped on that stage, a song that my daughter Jenny used to play to death before she died started playing. And some of you might know it. It's called My Immortal by Evanescence. And after she died, I played it to death because it just about flattened me every time I, I heard it. So I played it and played it to a point where I just about wanted to throw the CD disc out the window. And I knew I needed to do that to be able to handle it in, in a, a most effective, empowering and loving way. Anyway, Evanescence's My Immortal started playing and I stopped in my tracks on that stage going, oh my word, this is Jen's song and here it is playing as I, or as Kez and I get on that stage. And I said to Kez, oh, listen to this, it's My Immortal. And she said, you know, Janetta, that would really choreograph really well. We should put it in something we do sometime. And I said, yeah, actually it would choreograph quite well. And we got upstairs with, to the rest of the cast and told them and said, you know, this is the most amazing thing just happened. And Ani Umiyam, who, who is our dance director on a lot of shows, immediately said to me, you know, I just get a sense that it's time to do something more than the Swan Lakes and the, the, the Sleeping Beauties and which are very beautiful and precious and important. But what about something that's really meaningful like this? What, what if we put on a production that is about depression and suicide? It's growing by the day internationally and has such taboo attached to it. Anybody who's depressed and implodes and doesn't want other people to know because they think they're being, being judged. And it, it's a huge topic and subject. And everybody around that table went, Oh yeah, let's do that. And the rest has been history. Since September last year, we've been workshopping this production using contemporary dance, song, uh, uh, art even. We've had artists come in and start working artistic paintings. And it's been the most precious, precious journey as we started workshopping and seeing what, what would work and what wouldn't, what content to put in. Because basically we birthed this whole project from nothing. And it's just been so inspiring to see how it's morphed and grown and how the content has come together in such a heartfelt way. So to give you an idea, the, the, the overall of this production to assist in three ways. The one is for the depressed person because most depressed people feel unheard or misunderstood. And that misunderstanding, and it is their perception, it's actually a, a lack of very skillful tools that they, they don't have in that moment of time of feeling as though they're in a big black dark hole. And I know because I went there after I lost Jen and in and, and actual fact I sat there and went, now I know what you felt. I couldn't, I couldn't work it out before then. So it's a very dark place. So this production addresses identifying and understanding where a depressed person is and how impossible it feels for them. So it, it creates deep, deep empathy for the depressed person and has the potential to help anybody that's possibly stuck in stigma and dogma about depression and suicide to see a different side to this, a completely different side. And then it also assists the family and friends who are having to deal with the depressed person because a shroud of great secrecy tends to uh, uh, surround the person and their family and it's a lot of pressure and stress on friends and family. So it addresses that as well. So that's the three prongs, is the depressed person and the, the family and the people who really scratch their heads and say, I, I just don't understand what the problem is with this. So it addresses that and it also comes with it within the production some very meaningful insights as to how depression is created and it's all done through song and dance and and form it's just amazing to watch how this is is being portrayed in this production
so it, it also t it has a takeaway where people can come away with a deeper insight as to what this production is about. And that is why we've called it Insight, the Suicide Production. Uh, you may have noticed, those of you who, who may have been following all these posts, that there's a semicolon in the Insight replacing the eye of Insight. And that is actually there because the semicolon was created several years ago by somebody who lost her dad to suicide. And she decided that it would be really helpful to have a sign that you could use to remind you to pause if you were feeling extremely depressed and suicidally inclined. And a lot of people tattoo it onto their wrists or somewhere in their body so that when they're at that point where it, everything feels so extremely black and it just feels like there's no, no answer to look at that pause and go, okay, I will, I will pause and take a breath. And this too shall pass is, an, uh, is another one. So we've incorporated it into, into the production's name. Obviously, a production like this can't be done and put on in th with thin air. So we've put together a funding site. And whether it's one pound or however much that you might feel inclined to contribute towards this so that we can get this production its world premiere gala is in June of this year in Nairobi, and then we're looking to take it to New York. So we would love you to be a part of that history, invite you, and have you participate with us by supporting us. And we have a very big plan for this production to get it worldwide. So your little, whether it's one pound or whatever it is, will enable you and us to get it out there internationally and start making a change to the stigma that's attached to depression and suicide and enable this production to create new conversations on something that has been taboo for far too long. So I, I want to give you this personal invitation to and invite you to be a part of this history, to be a part of making a difference on a global basis to something that really, it's time. It's time to start new conversations, powerful ones, not just for the sake of speaking, but powerful ones with powerful solutions. And that's the potential this production has. And can't wait to share insight and theatrical art performance production with you soon. Lots of love. Bye.